Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jin. So I came across this video very bluntly titled Eating Less Meat Won't Save the Planet by What I've Learned. So I decided to give it a benefit of the doubt and I watched it only to find out it's full of misinformation and biases. And apparently this video has been driving every vegan and environmentalist crazy. So in this video, I'm going to respond to it and debunk it. Now the main problem with the video is that it sounds very reliable and convincing, but most of the evidence presented in the video comes from Dr. Frank Midlerner, who is criticized for his miscalculations and uses of incomplete statistics that downplay the environmental impacts of animal agriculture when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. Of course, he is paid by the industry, and he does his research for the industry who look to increase the demand for animal foods. So this wasn't the smartest thing Joseph, the creator of the video, could have done. But anyways, let's go ahead and debunk this. Now first, let's talk about water use. The water input that people assign to beef includes, and that's the majority, the so-called green water. And the green water is rainwater. So his argument is that we don't say, hey, look at the rainforest. It's using so much water. So it's unfair for us to say things like, to end up with 24 hamburger patties, it requires the amount of water you see in this pool. One quarter pound hamburger requires over 660 gallons of water to produce, the equivalent of showering two entire months. And I thought, well, okay, that's actually fair. However, the problem is that doesn't reflect the full picture. As this video shows, the animals aren't just eating the grass they are on, they're given feed. And it's very, very hard to believe there is any water in this dry thing. Plus, according to data from USDA in the US, 70% of the cows are raised in concentrated animal feeding operations or CAFOs. So they are mostly eating this dry thing and are given fresh water to drink. Also, according to the US government, in the US, 127.4 million acres of land is used to exclusively grow feed for animals. That means additional water, including blue water, is used to grow that feed. In fact, Joseph cites a source that shows all the animal-based foods take more blue water than all plant-based foods with the exception of nuts. Think about that the next time you're ordering an almond milk latte. Well, according to this study by Oxford University, cow's milk takes nearly twice the water almond milk takes. And in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, nuts are carbon negative and look at cows not looking good now going back to the earlier study it is concluded that replacing all meat by an equivalent amount of crop products such as pulses and nuts will result in a 30% reduction of the food related water footprint of the average American citizen again this is the same study Joseph used to attack almonds so maybe next time you're ordering a latte read your sources again and maybe take the video down so 94% of the water cows drink being green water is irrelevant at the end of the day. Yes, almonds in California are blue water intensive, but that doesn't mean we should eat animal-based foods that collectively take way more blue water in general. If you want to save water, we need to think about nutritional requirements when we eat. And beef is way more nutrient dense. So yeah, 122 liters used to make a quarter pound of beef is not nothing. But you can't compare that to a quarter pound of rice. Yes, you can't compare beef to rice because white rice isn't even considered the source of protein or any other nutrient. Why would you use a refined grain rather than whole foods? Why not use brown rice or even legumes? This is called cherry picking because rice takes relatively a lot of water. It's an unfair comparison. The author of the very study says, the general conclusion is that from a freshwater resource perspective, it is more efficient to obtain calories, protein, and fat through crop products than animal products. Now let's talk about food security. 84% of all li livestock feed across all species, 84% is non-human edible. The vast majority of what we feed to ruminant livestock throughout the world, the vast majority, well over 90% is non-human edible. Now the figure he uses is very problematic for a reason. The chart comes from this study and the numbers are based on dry weight, not total calories or energy, which actually matters. Weight is irrelevant because heavier doesn't mean more nutritious. Now his argument is the animals aren't eating as much food as we say they're eating because Do you eat oatmeal? Well, livestock are eating the otherwise useless oat holes and straw and millions of almond holes. These can be fed to cattle. Therefore, animals are part of our ecosystem. Even if that was true, well, that is true, that doesn't mean we should raise billions of animals unnecessarily contributing to global warming and destroying the planet just to get the non-human edible parts of the plants eaten. There is better use of the residue. We should use it for things like soil fertility and bioenergy instead, so it won't be wasted. According to this study he refers to, only 2.8 kilograms of human edible plants are needed to produce one kilogram of beef and 3.2 kilograms for pork 
American chicken. But if you actually read the study, it's for developing nations. In the US, we're looking 6 to 20 kilograms for 1 kilogram of beef. So we are wasting food because if we replace the meats with plants, we could globally produce at least 3 times more plant protein given the same food resources. Second, then how do you explain the Amazon deforestation? Almost 90% of the Amazon deforestation is caused by production of soya and the animal agriculture is responsible for 96% of it. Whereas humans, not just vegans, are only responsible for 4 to 6% of it. And the very same study Joseph refers to says, 85% of the world's soybeans are processed into soybean cake and 97% of them are fed to animals. And it says, when adding soybean cakes, meat represents a deficit of 11 megatons of protein per year. Animals take excess grain calories and turn them into a high quality, efficient source of protein. So that is a fat lie. The US meat production is also relying on the soy from Amazon and the US imports beef from South America. But the video doesn't mention Amazon or deforestation in general for not even a second. Because of course, this wasn't a convenient information for the agenda of the video. Now if you look at deforestation, all of a sudden there's a whole array of hidden issues that aren't covered in the video. Habitat destruction, species extinction, zoonotic diseases, antibiotic resistance, water pollution from animal manure ocean dead zones, and eutrophication. Also hundreds of species are going extinct every single day, mostly because of the loss of their habitat. And according to WWF, animal agriculture is largely to blame. Climate change isn't the only issue. The ecosystems and biodiversity need to be protected if we want to protect the planet. Now let's talk about greenhouse gas emissions. Methane is emitted when a cow burps or farts. Grass takes up carbon from the air by photosynthesis. Then cow eat that plant and its carbon and in the cow, the carbon is turned into methane, which is carbon and four hydrogens, CH4. Methane is then released into the air when the cow burps. Then in about 10 or 12 years, it's broken down into water and carbon dioxide. Carbon is then again taken from the atmosphere by the plant and the cow eats the plant and so on. What this means is that the cow is not adding new carbon to the atmosphere. He's absolutely missing the biggest issue here. It takes methane a decade or two to decay to CO2. And according to this study on science, over the course of 20 years, methane is 79 to 105 times more destructive than CO2 by volume. So methane contributes to global warming for decades and then turns into CO2, which still warms the planet. The video doesn't talk about nitrous oxide. Animal waste is responsible for 65% of all human-related nitrous oxide emissions, which has a global warming potential 200 196 times that of CO2. So what he's failing to mention is the global warming potential and carbon capture potential, which I'll talk about in a minute. He says that it's all good as long as we keep the number of cows we raise the same. But the human population is projected to only increase, meaning we'll have to be eating less and less meat to avoid climate rise. Bro, that is an own goal. We basically have less than a decade to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions to stop the irreversible global warming. Emissions for agriculture is projected to rise 80% by 2050. Do you see how urgent this is? Saying that hey, even if the entire US was to go vegan, the greenhouse gas emissions would only reduce by 2.6%. So let's keep eating meat to over a million people is really an irresponsible thing to do. Plus, the figure is terribly wrong. It's crazy. The 2.6 figure comes from this study, again by people who work with the animal farming industry. And this is based on the naive and nonsensical assumption that even if we were to stop raising animals, we would still produce the same amount of food we are producing today for livestock animals and we must eat it all. Meaning we would have to eat 4700 calories a day, which is ridiculous, disingenuous and deceitful. Lots of factors aren't taken into account. And if we actually look at the full life cycle analysis of beef products, which is a gold standard method for analyzing the environmental impact of a product, the emissions in the US would be about 3.7% and it doesn't include chickens or pigs. If half of the US went plant-based, the agricultural emission would be reduced by 35%. So if the entire US went fully plant-based, 35% times 2 equals 70%. Apply that to the US agricultural emission which makes up 10%. We're looking 7% reduction in all greenhouse gas emissions in the US, not 2.6%. And this is still not fully reliable. As this NYU professor says, even peer-reviewed scientific publications routinely underestimate methane emitted by animal agriculture by 39 to 90%. 
top down, meaning measurement from satellites detect more methane, so the actual emissions and the benefit of switching our diet could be so much higher if we're talking global. Animal agriculture accounts for 14 to 18 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions, exceeding that of the entire transportation systems combined. According to this study by Nature Sustainability, we could sequester up to 547 gigatons of CO2 emissions, preventing the chance of hitting 1.5 degrees Celsius rise by 2050 by adopting a plant-based diet. Also, arguably the most comprehensive study on farming and the environment ever conducted says that if the US went plant-based, the agricultural emission would be reduced by 61 to 73 percent, which leads me to land use, which is probably the most important aspect of this. Two-thirds of that agricultural land is what we call marginal, meaning you cannot grow crops there. The only food producing land use for these two-thirds are ruminant livestock. These animals upcycle non-human edible feed into highly digestible and highly nutritious animal source food. However, there are better uses of the marginal land. We could free up, rewild, and restore half of the agricultural land in the US, bringing the wildlife back, and most importantly, letting the forest naturally sequester the greenhouse gases emitted by the fossil fuel and transportation sectors, which you say are the problematic industries. I agree. You say cows only produce a tiny bit of methane, but vegans are saying we should rewild the land to sequester carbon. Either way, what you're saying is not better than what vegans and many scientists scientists are saying because you're not solving climate change but instead multiplying the problem by replacing the trees that sequester carbon by billions of unnecessary animals who just burp and fart. And the fart is 86 times powerful. The increase in human population only proves my point. Meat is unsustainable. So in the future, a very smart and productive way to use the marginal land would be to do vertical farming. The land doesn't need to be arable. This is the solution. Even today, if we replaced all the animal-based protein to plant-based protein, the US alone could feed at least 350 million more people with the same amount of land we're currently using to produce food. So yes, there are better uses of the land. Half of all fertilizers used in the world are animal manure, and all fertilizers going onto organic crops are animal manure. So vegans are also relying on the system of animal farming. The reason why this is happening is because we're raising billions of animals, so we have so much shit to get rid of. And again, the video doesn't mention water pollution, E. coli contamination, of course nothing about health or public health risks. He finally says food waste is the real issue. Non-animal foods make up 82% of our food waste. Another side effect of giving it up would probably be more food waste. I just think if more people went plant-based, although demand for plant foods rises, the supply would stay pretty much the same because the stores aren't selling all of them anyways. Less plants will go to waste, that's it, without having much more to be produced or stored. Tell me if I'm missing something, I'm not an expert. Even if that wasn't true, that doesn't mean we should eat more meat, that won't help. Plus, him blaming food waste for breeding methane does not make any sense when we could reduce the methane emission by a lot at the source in the first place. Also, he doesn't seem to realize that the animal agriculture is the largest form of food waste. Beef is the worst because it wastes 96% of food input while providing only 3% of the calories we eat. And you say meat is efficient and eating less meat won't save the planet? Do more research and think again. Yes, there needs to be a way to reduce food waste and the food should be used to feed the hungry mouths today. That's something we both agree on. All right, so here's the conclusion of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.